Hello, um, <clears throat> my name is Jun Hee, and I'm a postdoc in the group Manuel Andres at Caltech. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the conference organizers for inviting me to speak here at IQCQC. Um, today, I'll be talking about our recent work regarding universal randomness and benchmarking from uh, quantum many body dynamics. So to begin with, I'd like to point out that this is a very exciting time for quantum science and engineering. So we are now starting to harness quantum technologies for practical applications that could potentially outperform classical devices. And more remarkably, recently there have been a lot of progress in demonstrating various quantum applications using a physically different quantum hardware. So however, in experimental quantum science, there is a uh, universal challenge because of a uh, unavoidable competition between entanglements and decoherence due to noise and errors in experimental quantum device. For example, let's consider we have a quantum device uh, consisting of many qubits. For typical quantum experiments, we start by some uh, initial states such as all qubits initialized to the ground state or the zero state. Then we time evolve this initial state with a certain uh, program Hamiltonian, or we can also apply a set of quantum gates to create a highly entangled state, which can be useful for target applications. However, as more qubits are involved, we are more prone to errors. So the fundamental challenge here is that as system size increases, it usually takes a longer time to build a larger entanglements and therefore errors becomes more likely which will inevitably lead to a lower fidelity of quantum evolution. So this fundamental challenge raises a natural question of how we can scale up to larger systems while maintaining good control and also verifying the fidelity of quantum device. In fact, it is also not obvious how to extract the fidelity of large scale quantum device because the Hilbert space size or dimension increases exponentially with the number of qubits. So with this picture in mind, here's the uh, outline of my uh, talk today. First, I'll introduce a high fidelity Rydberg quantum simulator based on alkali earth atoms. And then I'll present our new method of benchmarking large scale quantum devices in an experimentally efficient manner. And after that, I'll also explain how our new benchmarking protocol is developed, motivated by our new finding of universality in ergoidic quantum many body dynamics. The first off, uh, let me briefly describe a quantum device based on single atom arrays trapped in optical tweezers. Recently, this optical tweezer system has become a very powerful tool that allows us to generate defect-free large-scale atom arrays with arbitrary dimensions and geometries. In particular, when using a neutral atom, one can make use of its ground state and highly excited states, so-called Rydberg states, to define a qubit to encode quantum uh, information. In addition, the Rydberg states can also provide a resource for creating entanglements. For example, if two atoms are too close to one another, then they can interact via long range dipole interactions. And we note that if the interaction strength is too strong, then we cannot excite two atoms simultaneously to the Rydberg states, which is now well known as the Rydberg blockade effect. And utilizing this phenomenon, we can efficiently prepare a highly entangled state, such as the maximally entangled Bell state. In experiments, we can also tune this interaction strength very easily by simply varying the distance between atoms in the error array. So based on this uh, experimental capability over the past several years, there have been a lot of exciting studies and demonstrations performed on a Rydberg quantum simulator. For example, the Rydberg platform allowed us to study quantum magnetism, exotic quantum dynamics, topological physics, and high fidelity entanglements, uh, just to name a few. Then the next question is, um, which atom do we want to trap in optical tweezers? So while previously uh, many people have studied alkali metal atoms, such as rhodium, 
due to their simple atomic structure, my colleague and I at Caltech have pioneered a new platform using strontium, which is an alkali earth atom having two valence electrons. And we find that uh, because of this uh, two electron structure, the strontium offers a number of very nice features, which help us improve the quantum fidelities in various fronts. For example, here I show a single atom Rabi oscillation curve where atomic population periodically oscillates between the ground and the Rydberg states. And as shown here, we find that a single qubit pi pulse fidelity is greater than 99.6%. And such high fidelity was actually enabled by our unique detection scheme based on uh, the auto ionization of strontium, which leads to an extremely high readout fidelity of the Rydberg states. And moreover, we also demonstrated that we can generate the maximally entangled, the two qubit bell state with a fidelity greater than 99%. And now the next and more challenging question is, going beyond this single qubit and two qubit level fidelities, how can we estimate the fidelity of large scale many body quantum device where the, the size of wave function is exponentially large? So to address this, this question, uh, let me now move on to the second topic of quantum device uh, benchmarking. So basically the fidelity of a quantum device is asking how well does my quantum device produce a desired quantum state? Uh, specifically on the left, we consider uh, noise-free clean quantum dynamics simulated on a classical computer. This theoretically ideal case will produce a pure quantum state with no adders. In contrast, on the right, uh, because of noise and adders in experiments, a mixed state will be produced where there's only finite probability of generating the desired target state. So therefore, the fidelity F can be defined as the, uh, the quantum state overlap between the target state uh, psi from theory and the density matrix rho from experiments. So however, here the main problem is that obtaining a density matrix rho in experiments is extremely challenging even for moderate uh, and small system sizes. And then how can you benchmark the large scale quantum devices? Basically, our main goal here is to learn the true fidelity without reconstructing a uh, density matrix. Uh, in this regard, uh, very recently, uh, the Google actually introduced a novel fidelity estimator called linear, linear uh, cross entropy or XEB in their quantum supremacy paper. In the paper, they use this uh, XEB estimator to fidelity score of their 53 qubit quantum computer. So here the main idea is that if we use a random quantum circuit where single qubit and two qubit uh, gates are randomly chosen and applied, then we can characterize the fidelity of large quantum device very efficiently. And more specifically, uh, if you can see the, the formula, this XEB estimator uh, captures the degree of correlation between experimental measurement outcomes and theoretical quantum uh, probabilities. And it is shown that if the random circuit uh, can generate a random ensemble of complex many body wave functions, then this estimator becomes a good proxy of fidelity, especially at late times. However, the, the problem here is that this method requires random quantum circuits with fine-tuned uh, spatial temporal control, which is not easily available for other quantum systems that have limited controllability. So to address this problem, we developed a new benchmarking protocol that can be applied to many different quantum platforms. In contrast to this random circuit case, 
our protocol only requires simple and time-independent Hamiltonian dynamics with a very small number of measurements. And I'll show you that in the later slides that Hamiltonian dynamics can also effect effectively generate the random state ensembles as in the digital quantum circuit, such that efficient benchmarking becomes possible. So um, more directly, so here's the, uh, our um, new benchmarking formula FD. Similar to uh, Google's, this XEV estimator, our formula also characterizes the correlation between theory and experiments to estimate the true fidelity. So to verify our fidelity estimator, we first designed atom model of our Rydberg quantum simulator and numerically simulated noisy open quantum dynamics. Here, I like to emphasize that our atom model accurately mimics our noisy quantum evolution by including realistic noise and uh, error sources of our experiments with no free parameters. And you can see that indeed, our fidelity estimator, the solid line, agrees very well with the true fidelity, the dashed line. After seeing this, we proceeded to characterize the experimental fidelity of our Rydberg simulator using the new fidelity estimator. Remarkably, we also find that all of these quantities lie on top of each other. And this excellent agreement between atom model and experiments also indicates that we have successfully modeled our noisy quantum device. And this implies that we can now extract the true fidelity without relying on tomographic uh, techniques. So um, as I explained uh, or briefly mentioned earlier, we are ultimately interested in how this uh, quantum device fidelity scales with system size, which will also provide very crucial information about the interplay between entanglement growth and fidelity decay. In this regard, we note that the larger quantum systems can develop larger entanglement over time under certain uh, chaotic quantum uh, Hamiltonian dynamics. So in the following plot, we estimate the fidelity values at the entanglement saturation times where the entanglement saturation is limited by system size. And again, as you can see on the right graph, we find that our estimate fidelities from experiments agrees very well with the true fidelity prediction from atom model for all system sizes up to 30 qubits. And I like to uh, stress again that in this plot, we only took a few thousand measurements for each system size, which is much smaller than their uh, corresponding uh, effective uh, Hilbert space time engines. In fact, the, the standard deviation of our estimator, basically the, the sampling error, is almost independent of system size. And this indicates that our benchmarking method is very efficient as compared to other existing uh, techniques. Importantly, we also numerically verified and confirmed that our benchmarking method can be applied to many different quantum platforms independent of system details, including both digital and analog quantum devices. And now you might be curious to understand why our benchmarking protocol works so well almost universally for all the different cases. In short, this is related to our new finding of this universal randomness in generic quantum systems. So in the following slides, uh, let me elaborate on what I mean by the universal randomness. And uh, first of all, as a brief introduction, Recently, uh, there has been a, a growing interest in studying the properties of so-called random pure state ensembles. For example, these random pure states can be generated by explicitly randomizing a quantum evolution. Here, uh, please note that this random uh, pure state ensemble is conceptually different from a mixed state or a density matrix where the pure quantum states are just averaged together. Rather, 
Here we are more interested in studying the microscopic distribution of individual pure states without averaging. In quantum information science, studying the, the properties of random state ensembles help us better understand the ergoidicity of quantum systems and also prove unexplored universal properties and develop uh, quantum applications, like practical quantum applications, such as benchmarking. So more concretely, uh, let's imagine that we perform repeated quantum evolution. And for each evolution, we will use different quantum gates or Hamiltonians to generate different quantum states. And typically, after generating the quantum states, we perform the projective measurements where a quantum wave function randomly collapses into one of the two to the n classical measurement outcomes, which can be represented as a, the, the bit string, uh, zero, and, zero, and, uh, zero and bit strings of length n. And suppose that we are only interested in a particular bit string, a Z naught, and plot is corresponding uh, probability values for different quantum states we have uh, generated. Under this condition, it is well known that regardless of the choice of bit string, the, the probability distribution exhibit a universal form, uh, which is called the Porter Thomas distribution. And the moments of this uh, Porter Thomas distribution follow a universal value of K factorial for the case order. And however, uh, for analog quantum simulators, we are actually often studying quantum state of evolution under a fixed time independent Hamiltonian. And pictorially in this many body Hilbert space, the initial quantum state travels over time by following this Hamiltonian evolution. In other words, this means that we can also construct an ensemble of pure states sampled from the different time points along this trajectory. However, as you might expect, the sampled pure states are not completely random because time independent Hamiltonians have constraints such as energy conservation and other symmetries. So if we look at the histogram of these probability fluctuations of particular bit string over time, it is indeed different from, different from the Porter Thomas distribution. However, surprisingly, we discovered that we could retrieve this universal Porter Thomas distribution by considering the so-called diagonal ensemble. By definition, the diagonal ensemble is an incoherent ensemble in the energy eigenbasis of a given Hamiltonian. And we can get access to this uh, diagonal ensemble just by taking the time average of quantum states sampled from the time domain. And here, interestingly, we find that if we normalize the original probability values by the diagonal ensemble, then we can recover the universal portal to mass distribution. And remarkably, this universal portal to mass distribution is also observed in other Hamiltonian dynamics. And then you can see that the once the probability values are normalized by their respective diagonal ensemble, then all the different Hamiltonians can generate the Porter Thomas distributions independent of Hamiltonian details. And we have experimentally demonstrated such emergent Porter Thomas distribution from our uh, Rydberg quantum simulator. Here we plot the normalized probability dynamics as a function of time for three different uh, bit strings. And you can see that at all the times, the bit string probabilities indeed form the Porter Thomas distribution. However, at late time, the Porter Thomas distribution is destroyed because of the coherence in experiments. So essentially, this gradual vanishing of the Porter Thomas distribution is the key feature we utilize for quantum device benchmarking. So before concluding, uh, let me also share a few examples of universal uh, usual uh, uh, some applications 
uh, of benchmarking. So besides the estimation of fidelity as a function of evolution time, we can also characterize the target state preparation fidelity. For example, here you can prepare an interesting many body quantum state by employing either quantum gates or some adiabatic uh, sweeps or some kind of quantum algorithms. And in order to estimate the target state preparation fidelity, we just need to perform a short time chaotic Hamiltonian evolution and then apply our benchmarking formula. And we numerically verify that we can indeed learn the target state uh, preparation fidelity for many different quantum states, such as the GHD state, topological ground state, cluster state, and et cetera. And also when it comes to uh, quantum device benchmarking, it is also equally important to make sure that programmed Hamiltonian parameters are well calibrated. And we find that our fidelity estimator can also be used to calibrate quantum devices very efficiently. For example, in Rydberg systems, the Hamiltonian has three parameters, which are related to Rabi frequency, laser detuning, and the C6 interaction coefficient. And we find that the estimated Hamiltonian parameters indicated by these vertical lines uh, show a very good agreement with the predetermined parameters from independent measurements. And furthermore, we also experimentally demonstrated that we can even learn the local Hamiltonian parameters. And lastly, we also provide a new idea of making some meaningful comparison between digital and analog quantum devices. So basically, the main idea here is that we can compare the fidelities of generating a certain entanglement uh, entropy from both digital and analog devices. Of course, the entanglement growth rate and the maximum entanglements depends on system details, but by using this uh, maximally achievable entanglements as a common link, we can maybe talk about an effective two qubit gate fidelity of an uh, analog quantum simulator and then compare it against uh, different types of digital quantum devices. So to, um, to summarize, so today uh, I have discussed how to estimate the fidelity of large scale quantum devices based on the universal randomness we find in quantum many body dynamics. In particular, our Rydberg system is expected to maintain a high fidelity, even at larger uh, systems. So we are currently working on improving fidelity in the very large uh, system regime with the ultimate goal of achieving the effective quantum advantage in an analog quantum simulators. So with that, uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, my, um, all of my collaborators in this, involved in these projects. And also very briefly, I'd like to mention that I'll be uh, starting my own research group at Stanford next year. So please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Um, okay, so uh, thanks for the very nice talk and also congratulations for your new start. Now it's time for the uh, questions. Yeah, thank you for the nice talk. I really, uh, the, uh, yeah, your talk was very interesting. Uh, about the, the, the randomness, you show that the uh, uh, different types of platform uh, shows the uh, different deviations from your suggest the uh, randomness and the, uh, what was it, the portal distribution. Uh, does it mean something about the uh, like the controllability of the uh, system, uh, the deviation from your uh, randomness graph? Um, so actually, it's not uh, related to controllability of of the different systems. So it's rather related to uh, basically the characteristics of of Hamiltonian you employ to study quantum evolution. So as I um, mentioned earlier, if you only consider a fixed time independent Hamiltonian, 
then there could be some constraints on your you know, generated quantum states. So therefore you cannot just you know, generate arbitrarily random quantum states in the Hilbert space, whether your you know, capability of generating random states, random state will be limited to a smaller size. Uh, so therefore, we need to introduce certain kind of um, normalization in some sense, which I called uh, diagonal ensemble, in order to retrieve the, the universal kind of randomness or the universal this support of Thomas distribution. Uh, if I understand it correctly, doesn't it mean some Hamiltonian can access some uh, subset of the uh, uh, wave functions, uh, available wave function state of the Hamiltonian. So I, I think it's, it, is, it could be related with the like, controllability of these the, uh, platforms. Uh, exactly. So in that sense, it's uh, related to some kind of controllability because obviously if you fix Hamiltonian, it can have certain structure. So you can only explore the uh, subspace of the Hilbert space. Um, so, but we at, yet still, we want to find some standardized and common method of benchmarking because it is practically invisible to, to design different protocols uh, specific to basically your system. So our main goal was to find out some standardized way of benchmarking. And then we give the, you know, just one formula where you can just apply uh, regardless of your controllability in your language uh, that you have in your own system. So have you tried to quantify that deviation from your, uh, uh, the uh, predicted the, uh, pre distribution of the different platforms? That's a really great question. So after introducing this uh, diagonal ensemble factor uh, properly, still we find small deviation between the, you know, uh, normalized distribution and ideal port Thomas distribution. Uh, and to the leading order, they show qualitatively almost identical kind of um, uh, appearance. But if you want to quantify the difference between the actual distribution and the ideal port Thomas, there's a still difference. And that actually error is limited by the effective Hilbert space dimension or the subspace dimension that you have in your Hamiltonian. Original Okay, uh, any other questions? Yes. Yeah, thank, thank you for a very in interesting talk. So I'm just curious, uh, when you uh, take a temporal average to reproduce a uh, Paul Thomas distribution, uh, maybe can you comment on like how, how quickly does it converge to Paul Thomas distribution with respect to time? It's a, that's an excellent question. So uh, uh, my honest answer is that we are still investigating and trying to better understand the convergence of the time averaged probabilities uh, to the exact uh, diagonal ensemble factor. But empirically, we find that uh, if we average over uh, to the entanglement saturation times, uh, then it is sufficient to to see the this uh, emergent Paul Thomas distribution. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we can have more questions. So if you have, please raise your hand. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you uh, very much for your nice talk. The uh, actually, I'm interested in the, uh, the sample complexity, the your method, and the uh, standard the fidelity or the st uh, state tomography. Uh, yes, could, could you the talk, please? Yes, um, that's also an excellent question. So in the beginning, I was talking about the definition of fidelity. So if you just think about definition, you need to know first target state you want to generate from theory and also experimental this density metric row. And then uh, if you only have like few qubit systems like single qubit or two qubit systems, then of course you can directly reconstruct the density metrics. However, for larger systems, 
the density matrix, uh, its size will be exponentially large. So basically two to the N by two to the N matrix. So when it comes to tomographic uh, techniques, so essentially we want to learn all the, this uh, exponential large or to the N matrix elements. So that's why the scaling is not favorable. But in our case, uh, we are not actually reconstructing the, the, the density matrix. Rather, we are relying on this universal randomness we generate. And then that allows us to just compare the correlation in the population distribution uh, in the measurement basis. And then it may be still surprising to see that the, the standard deviation of our estimator does not depend on system size, but it is actually uh, coming from the fact that uh, we first pre-compute the theoretical prediction. So basically for every possible bit string, we know corresponding you know, probability values. This is kind of like a lookup look up table. And then whenever you measure bit string from bit strings, Rather than computing the probabilities within the experimental data itself, actually we look at the corresponding probability value from this lookup table. So, and then you can actually cross correlate the measured bit string with the uh, theoretical prediction. So that's how the, the benchmarking can be efficient.